Hello friend, I am Travis Norville, the pastor of Judson Memorial Baptist Church, and on behalf of this wonderful congregation, I just want to welcome you to this time that we are sharing together. I hope that this is a time when you feel a little bit of love, a little bit of hope, a little joy, a little peace. It is the fourth week of Advent. We're almost to Christmas, almost. Uh, and, and out of that time, we like to take the fourth week of Advent and have some fun. So our Christmas pageant will be shown. Uh, it is a, a video that the, the kids uh, recorded, and I think they did a fabulous job, as always. Uh, and it's also the week where I do what's called the sermon in verse, where I, you know, I do a sermon that rhymes. And it's what you just kind of moan and groan your way through it, and you roll your eyes, and you think, oh, come on, really? Um, but we need maybe just for one Sunday a little bit of laughter and a little bit of just release there's a lot of emotions, a lot of uh, pain that we're all feeling. Uh, we can see this variant, the Omicron variant, uh, it feels like it's taken over. It's already the dominant variant now. Uh, and we don't know what's going to happen. And some of the vaccines uh, work against, work, um, you know, provide protection and others don't. And so we're, we're worried about it. There's anxiety is rising again. So we took a time and just, okay, let's just have some... Uh, Let's just have some joy in the midst of that. So we did. Uh, so you'll see that the choir uh, sings another beautiful number. Carolyn uh, does another wonderful centering prayer. So I, I, I'll offer you this service and hope that you find it um, enchanting in some way. The other part I'd just like to say, you know, Friday, or, uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, Friday is uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, we will have a in-person service at 8.45 Central Standard Time. And uh, it will begin with organ and violin, and then the uh, formal service will begin at 9 p.m. Now, if you're not able to attend or don't feel um, comfortable attending, those are perfectly uh, fine reasons. Uh, we will have a live stream. Uh, if you go to the um, Judson Church uh, Facebook page, uh, what you're going to do is just uh, facebook.com backslash Judson Church backslash live. That's the link for it. Uh, and that link will enable you to watch it without a Facebook account. Now the service will be filmed and we will upload that uh, as soon as possible. So you'll have, uh, you'll have this service on demand or in live how you would like to watch that. Um, also know that uh, on December 26th and January 2nd, we will be having online worship services only. There will not be any in-person services those two Sundays. So I'll just give you a, a heads up on that. Well, I hope you enjoy this service, and I hope that our uh, time together is um, worthwhile. Peace. Good morning. Good morning. Well, here we are, the final sprint before Christmas with all of the stress and longings and hopes and griefs and excitements and poking at that uh, that brings. And here we are in the final days of the waning sun with all of the longings and griefs and sadnesses and even depression um, that that brings. And it's in this, these days of darkness that we need something larger than ourselves to believe in. Um, the sun is going to return. The spirit is going to birth and rebirth itself over and over continually. And it's moments of wonder and awe that often tap us into that something larger. Wonder and awe that's always available to us as long as there is a beautiful sunset or a cardinal in a tree and these moments tend to be fleeting 
but they can have a big impact on us and become a touchstone to hope and faith and what we know to be true. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, Jane Goodall. She is a chimp expert, environmentalist, conservationist, writer. And in her memoir, she beautifully describes a moment of wonder and awe that she said, and I quote, it marked an epiphany in my thinking about my place on planet Earth and the meaning of my life. So I'm actually going to read to you this beautifully written excerpt about her moment of wonder and awe. And as I do, I invite you to close your eyes and really try to imagine yourself there with her in the scene. She writes, Many years ago, in the spring of 1974, I visited the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. I had wanted to go inside this glorious cathedral ever since reading Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Little did I know just how important that visit would be. There were not many people around, and it was quiet and still inside. I gazed in silent awe at the great rose window glowing in the morning sun. All at once, the cathedral was filled with a huge volume of sound, an organ playing magnificently for a wedding taking place in a distant corner. Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor. I had always loved the opening theme, but in the cathedral, filling the entire vastness, it seemed to enter and possess my whole self. It was as though the music itself was alive. That moment, a suddenly captured moment of eternity, was perhaps the closest I have ever come to experiencing ecstasy, the ecstasy of the mystic. How could I believe it was the chance gyrations of bits of primeval dust that had led up to that moment in time, the cathedral soaring to the sky, the collective inspiration and faith of those who caused it to be built, the advent of Bach himself, the brain, his brain, that translated truth into music, and the mind that could, as mine did then, comprehend the whole inexorable progression of evolution. Since I cannot believe that this was the result of chance, I have to admit anti-chance. And so I must believe in a guiding power in the universe. In other words, I must believe in God. So I'm going to read a part of that a second time. And this time as I do, I invite you to allow a memory of a moment of wonder and awe that you have had to come into your mind. And it could be a moment with music or art, like with Jane, or in nature, or with a newborn baby, or whatever rises into your brain. Allow that to rise up as I read a part of this the second time. That moment, a suddenly captured moment of eternity, was perhaps the closest I have ever come to experiencing ecstasy, the ecstasy of the mystic. How could I believe it was the chance gyrations of bits of primeval dust that had led up to that moment in time, the cathedral soaring to the sky, the collective inspiration and faith of those who caused it to be built, the advent of Bach himself, the brain, his brain, that translated truth into music, and the mind that could, as mine did then, comprehend the whole inexorable progression of evolution. 
Since I cannot believe that this was the result of chance, I have to admit anti-chance. And so I must believe in a guiding power in the universe. In other words, I must believe in God. So take a moment to let your moment of wonder and awe reveal itse itself to you, reveal its truths, what you know to be true. What do you know to be true based on your own felt experience of wonder and awe? And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And this is your truth, this is your hope to hold on to in the darkest days your hope, your truth to hold on to as we approach Christmas. And from well, now's the time where we gather for prayer. I ask you, if you can, light a candle with us, or turn on a lamp, or take your shoes off, or roll over in bed, however, whatever it takes. It's just something to mark the time is different. Uh, maybe you're listening to this at 3 in the morning. Uh, you're listening to the news and you couldn't go to sleep. Uh, maybe you're listening to this first thing in the morning, or with a cup of coffee, or... Maybe you're watching this in the afternoon, just kind of letting time bide. Well, here we are together. Let's just mark this time. This may be a little bit different. So we're going to share some prayers uh, that we have. And for me, uh, reading the prayers that come through, uh, it has been just a uh, illuminating experience to see how people care about friends and family and the situations that we're all facing. So let's bring those all to our prayers at this time. And uh, I will read what's, what's in the bowl that was left on Sunday. It was brought forward, and then I have some more that you all have emailed me, or some of you have texted, and some of you have sent some things on Facebook. So let's just uh, pray for these together at this time. Perish for those dealing with depression, darkness, and pain, and all those who love them. Mild COVID for those who get it, yes, for sure. Uh, we want to also uh, keep part in our prayers. George, um, uh, he's in the hospital with the flu, so let's pray for him, and let's pray for uh, Joyce as well. Pray comfort for my friend Bob, who lost his partner Susan on Friday. Yeah. What a gratitude for the life of Bell Hooks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pray for the song of justice and love. Yes, for sure. Uh, we also want to lift up, uh, Ann, Ann's mom died this week, and so we just want to um, lift up her mom, her memory, and just comfort uh, Ann and her family on this day. Grateful for Christian uh, Christmas traditions passed down and celebrated year after year. Please pray for Jane's sister's husband, Joe. Pray for a miracle. We're praying for a miracle. We're going to throw our love into this realm and we're going to ask God uh, continually to act upon it. Peace on earth and goodwill to all. A prayer for just one word, patience. Someone's asked prayer, may I allow myself to be a conduit to tap power beyond myself. Hmm. Pray for the health and safety of all children. And there have been uh, numerous prayer requests come in from parents and teachers and social workers and people that are working with kids, both uh, you know, kids from preschool into college, and and others, I'm, and others as well. But um, uh, kids in that age range, just the mental health. Uh, these kids are going through a lot, and I think as parents and as adults, you know, we think maybe we can kind of see what's going on with them, but we really have no idea. Um, you know, the pain, the anxiety, the unsuredness that they are experiencing. So let's just, especially this time, let's just lift up our kids at this time. Comfort and joy for all this holiday season. I hope, for, I hope compassion for all humanity will find a bigger place in the universe. 
I'm grateful for the people at Judson who have expressed care and acceptance and who call me by name. I'm grateful for Judson, especially Carolyn, providing the opportunity to feel my truth. That's the truth. Carolyn does wonderful work here, and we are definitely thankful for her. I ask you to uh, take a moment to um, share some things that are on your heart. We have some prayers that were shared that uh, were not read aloud, and maybe you have some too. And imagine yourself putting them in this bowl at this time. And let's let the bowl uh, lift these prayers to God. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, our Mother, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
religious colors. It is now time for another Judson Christmas pageant. Why do we need to tell the story over and over again? Because like all other great stories that have been told through the ages, the story of Christmas teaches important spiritual truths about the sleeves of our world. The angels singing of peace and goodwill deserve to be heard forever because they are the angels in human hearts. The humble shepherds who had the openness to hear and receive a message of hope deserve to live to the end of time. They remind us of our responsibility to make this world a better place. The three wise persons, so faithfully seeking the way of the star, deserve to go in search again each and every year, for they represent our quest for the love in our own hearts, in each other, and in our broken and beautiful world. Animals also have an important role in the Christmas story. They symbolize peace and calm and inclusively of the manger. All living creatures together share our earth home and our one earth family. Now we are going to tell the story of a baby born a long time ago, but it could also be the story about a baby born this very moment, a long, long, long time ago in a city far, far away from here. There lived an emperor named Caesar Augustus. He ruled over a large part of the world. One day, the emperor called together his advisors and declared, I need more money for my armies. Send out soldiers to all the lands. They must take people journey back to their towns where they were born, no matter how far away that is. And everyone must sign their name in a big book and then pay me a tax. In one of those places, a place called Galilee, lived Mary and Joseph. They were a young couple, and Mary was about to have a baby. Mary and Joseph had to travel a long, long time for many, many days, and they were very, very tired. They needed to rest and sleep. When they got to Bethlehem, they tried to find a room for the night, but every place in town was full. There was no room for them anywhere, and no one seemed willing to help. Joseph was scared that they'd have no place to sleep. Finally, one innkeeper said they could sleep in an old stable out back where the animals were. A donkey, some go cows and goats, probably dirty and smelly. But Mary and Joseph would be the same, would be safe for the night. In our story, no one had any room. Their hearts were closed. Then one person, the innkeeper, decided to help. They didn't do it perfectly, but they found a way to make some room. This is a story about opening our hearts and making room for anyone who needs to be cared for. When we do not have enough money for the very important basics of life, like food, clothing, and shelter, we're worried. We are scared. But sometimes some of us have enough or even a little extra money and food and clothing. And so we decide to share it with those who do not. This is how we take care of each other and express love. Like today, we have our drop-off for the for the Judson Housing Donation Drive to provide a new refugee family the household items that they need to settle into their new home. Back to our story in Bethlehem, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks of sheep through the night, through the night, taking care of them, keeping them together so they didn't get lost. If a sheep did wander away, a shepherd would go and find it. It was very dark out in the fields and cold and sometimes dangerous. Shepherds and their dogs care for the sheep in the fields, but each one of us is like a shepherd. We are called to take great, great care of each other and make sure that the smallest of us are watched over. We help each other and make sure everyone is taken care of and part of a loving community. In our story, while Mary and Joseph were in the stable, angels appeared in the sky above, the shepherds in the fields. The glory of, of spirit shone all around, and the angels said, Behold, do not be afraid, for I bring good news of great joy for all people. For a baby is born in Bethlehem, a baby so poor he's sleeping with the animals in a manger, but this baby has great love inside of him. 
just as there is great love inside each of you. This baby will grow up and show us how to live out this love and peace in the world. Meanwhile, wise people from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the king that has been born? We've come to honor him. These wise ones came from a faraway land, probably Iron or Quan. They set a bright star in the sky and followed it to the stable because they knew it led to a baby who had changed history. The wise ones brought gifts and gathered with the animals and the shepherds who were being drawn by the bright star and the angels to the little baby sleeping in the manger. And that is what happened on the first Christmas Eve. Jesus was born into the world. Loving parents held him. Shepherds and wise people gathered to celebrate him. They all believed in the love he could show the world. And today, in this very moment, many people still believe in the great love that is possible in our human hearts. The blessing of each of our births, the gift of ears to hear music, eyes to behold light, hands to build true peace on earth, and to hold each other in love. A baby named Jesus taught that love is the most important gift of all. On Christmas, we take notice of being wrapped in this light and love, and we lift up our hands and hearts and voices in song. This is the end of one Christmas story and the beginning of another and another and another. Long ago in Bethlehem Christ was born through Mary's yes The angel choir sang of this kiss That God is woven in with this As Christ was born on Christmas Day, the universe was set at play. For opening our eyes to see, Christ is born through you and me. of this kiss that God is woven in with this. Christ is born in you and me setting all the captives free just like Jesus said would be Christ is born through you and me. Merry Christmas, God King. Merry Christmas. Okay, everybody, so a few things before the uh, sermon in verse, so you know a few things about it. Um, last this year, uh, you know, in May, we lost uh, Eric Carle, you know, the great um, children's author. So this is an homage to Eric Carle. He uh, got us through countless nights. Uh, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, Eric Carle more than a, a Curious George book. Because even here, I've actually analyzed a curious a sentence in a curious george book 
yeah, there's no subject. There's, there's just verbs. It's just run-on sentence after run-on sentence. And the kids would just be like, read it again. And we're like, oh, not another Curious George book. But Eric Carr, you could read those for days. So this is an homage to him. It's uh, if you read the um, you know, Hermit Crab Finds a Home, that's what this one's modeled after. So, but instead of a hermit crab, we have a gnome. Uh, and this gnome's name is Rupert. And why gnomes? Well, there's a whole tradition about uh, trolls and fairies and pixies and other creatures, but gnomes are relatively new in, myth in mythology. So gnomes didn't appear, gnomes, gnomes, gnomes didn't appear until the Renaissance. And so they just made a gnome up uh, and called it that. So we have lots of flexibility with gnomes on what they can and can't do. So we're gonna have some fun with the gnome. Um, so a few things that you need to know about gnomes and other parts, to, so this sermon makes, what well, this Christmas tale makes sense. One is that gnomes like to drink, so that's gonna happen. Uh, and gnomes are quite gassy, so you're gonna, that's gonna make an appearance. Um, Methodist, technically, when they first came out, were teetotalers, so I'm gonna make reference to that. Harry Emerson Fosdick was a preacher at Riverside Church in New York City and for a time was supposedly the most famous preacher in the world. Uh, some, some people in Pittsburgh, when they say you plural, they say use. So in order to make a word rhyme, I had to use that. Uh, Quakers are known for their silence. So there's going to be a time where Rupert goes to a Quaker church and you need to know what happens. That's what's going to happen. So, um, but I think that's all you need to know. Feel free to go ahead and groan if you want to practice groaning because some of the rhymes are really bad. Yeah. Yep, yep, and you're thinking in your mind, you're gonna hear, oh, this is about a four beat measure, and then the next one's gonna be four beats and it's gonna rhyme. Well, it's gonna rhyme, but it may take me about 16 beats to get there. So, um, <laughs> you know, and sometimes when you're like, what did you do that for? Well, you try writing one of these, right? It's the hardest sermon to write in here. So, um, let's start our transition. Um, the person who is reading this poem is not me, but it's a character. Um, Claude Rogers, which is Fred Rogers' kind of weird cousin. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a... Wonderful day in this, it's a beauty day in this beauty was a beautiful day for a beauty. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in this neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well stay. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? Could you be my neighbor? Won't you be? Could you be? Please, won't you be my neighbor? Rupert the gnome searches for a home. I told you, I told you. It doesn't get any better than that. Rupert the gnome lived a fruitful life, underground and careful without strife. Till one day Jolene, the condo woman, came and changed his game plan. <laughs> Move earth, dig down, deep, 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 condos, condos, cheap, 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 which made Rupert sing, Jolene, 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 Jolene. <laughs> Why must you take my home? I'm begging you, please don't take my home. <laughs> Rupert knew he must evacuate. A new home he must contemplate. And so he sang, Away in Minneapolis, No crib for a bed. The little known Rupert laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay, and little known Rupert 
Didn't know I could have a home. <laughs> I never said every line would rhyme. <laughs> my new home, my new home will be a church. Empty mostly, I'll do my search. The first church he explored was a Methodist. But gnomes like beer, they're not tea, total list. <laughs> hey folks, you're more than happy to come up here and try this yourself, right? The second church was a UCC. Neat and orderly, but they weren't very fun. -y. <laughs> Off he went to an Episcopal. Pull. Piscuit pull. Let's see how this rhymes. But the incense caused his sinuses. Oh no, I need to read out number again. Let's do this. Um, this is a tough one, folks. Um, off he went to the Episcopal pull. But the incense made his sinuses a scandal. For sure, for sure, the Quakers, they have big hearts. But the silence meant he could not be carefree with his farts. <laughs> <laughs> then off to the beautiful Catholic. Nice place, but the preacher was no Foz Dick. Surely, surely the Lutherans would be right. Their plates of ludifisk made his belly uptight. <laughs> and so he began to sing, with only one place left. They're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. They'll make a film about a gnome that's sad and lonely. And all I have to do is act naturally. Then he found the Judson congregation. Maybe this would improve his situation. But there was misgivings with this bunch. They're Baptist. They're mean. They're weird. That was his hunch. <laughs> and he sang that Elvis Costello song just a little louder, thinking about this church. There's some things you just can't cover up with lipstick and powder. <laughs> but the sign said something that made him feel whole. Bring your doubts, bring your hopes, bring your doubts, feed your souls. So he entered with much trepidation. But they welcomed Rupert without complication. We've been waiting for a gnome like you, someone to help these yahoos. <laughs> What's your name, lad? Let's get you a name tag. More important, Rupert, I must, we must incur. John wants to know if you're a ten -er. <laughs> What's your skills? Can you pay the bills? But a kid stood up and shouted, Loud, love this gnome for who he is, or he'll run to St. Cloud. It's Christmas time, don't you know, with baby Jesus and God says hello. Love this gnome, not for what he can do for this group, but love this gnome to form an open loop where his love and our love meet, where we make music with a beautiful beat. Rupert the gnome coughed and shuffled his feet. He said, I have a word to entreat. There was a song I used to sing. It's by the Beatles. It has a nice ring. I sang it when I used to drink mead. You know it as love is all you need. I know it's not a Christmas carol, but we can sing it without much apparel. So would you all please join me? in the chorus of this song. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Receive this benediction. We may be scattered and separated. We may be lonely and isolated. We may be scared and anxious. But don't wait for someone else to initiate a hello or grace. Call someone. Write someone. Drop off some cookies. Don't stop offering acts of kindness and compassion. Love the world into a new existence. The heavens may not open, and you may not have a dove light on your shoulder, and you may not hear, with you I am well pleased. But the world will say thanks. Go and be the neighbor that God calls you to be. Amen.